I saw in your blog how you were like um, four steps to being doing something that you fear. Like, was there any fear that went into making the making Brown Girl Bloggers or your own blog? There was no fear because I didn't really expect people to read it like how they do. I didn't expect to get the numbers that I have at all. So I wasn't afraid. Also, it was less about me and more about other people. So um, the fear, I've only felt fear when I'm putting myself out there. So like... It, fear came later once I realized, oh, people are reading this, people are watching me, people email me, and they care about what I have to say. So there was no fear to start. And I kind of think as a blogger, you shouldn't have fear when you're starting because that's the perfect time. Because you, when your audience is small, you can make mistakes and mess up and break your website and like th three people will notice. And you get better and you grow over time. So yeah, there was no fear to start. I think I probably feel more fear now than I did when I started. And how were you able to capture your audience? Did you start off first with your own blog and then vlogging and now the um, podcast? Yes, so I had a blog for about a year and I had an okay audience. You know, it was a decent size for being starting a blog for a year. My blog, I mean, my audience catapulted once I started Brown Girl Blog. It's because what I did with my blog, I have wanted the growth to be super, super organic in that I don't actively try to grow my, my personal blog. I never have so far. Like, I've never been like, oh, I, let me try to find people or do ads or anything like that. But with Brown Girl Bloggers, I wanted other minority women to find me so I can know who they were. So I actively, like, I remember I used to go through the hashtag, like, black girls or something like that on Instagram just to see, like, is anybody here a blogger? And I would do this for hours. So I grew Brown Girl Bloggers more from, like, how you would grow a business account. So once I started getting more people um, to read Brown Girl Bloggers, they were kind of like, who's this chick that does Brown Girl Bloggers? And then my blog grew. And now you started the podcast. So what do you hope to get out of the podcast experience? Oh, this podcast is so cool. So basically, it's not even called um, Brown Girl Bloggers Podcast at all. It's called Creative Millennial. And mm -hmm. basically, I want to learn from other people. So although it's called Creative Millennial, I'm going to interview people from all walks of life. And I want to learn from people who have had successful careers, people who maybe are in the middle of their careers, people who are just starting, um, therapists, whatever. I just want to take as much information as I can in because, and also I want my listeners to take the information in too, because learning is so fundamental. Like you can't just keep learning and not doing, but talking to other people, so many bloggers like would be afraid if they think of me as whatever they think, what level I'm on, they would be afraid to reach out to me like you did just through email. Like, Hey, and that's scary to a certain extent, but it's like, if you don't have conversations with other creatives and other bloggers, then you're going to be lost in the sauce, girl, like you just are. So that's what I hope to get. I hope to just learn. I hope to have really good conversations and inspire people. So learning and inspiration, I guess.